Ten minutes of daily reality check for Saturday, the 20th of January. We already gave you our prediction. We didn't give you our predictions. Let's put our balls on the line right now, Obi, and predict who will be in the Super Bowl. Let's even predict the score so people can fucking really bust our balls on Monday. So I'm going, I'm going New England. I'm going New England 27, Jacksonville 13. I'm going to go a close game in the first half, and Blake Bortles turns into Blake Bortles in the second half. And then in the other game, I really I think it would be cool for Minnesota to be a home, um, home Super Bowl team with Patton Oswalt as quarterback. But I'm going Eagles. I mean, I think Foles is going to, I think they're going to do it. And I think they're going to cry and they're going to lose to the Patriots. So I'm going Philadelphia 17, Minnesota 14. I got Jags 28, New England 25. Woo! Love the 25. It's going to be a field goal. All right. But uh, I think I, I think I got Leonard Fournette for like two touchdowns. Bortles is going to run one and he's going to pass one. All right. Uh... I see – that is, by the way, uh, four touchdowns. So that must be a few extra points mixed. No, that's you four got, touchdowns. You got Fournette for two ja- – oh, you got three touchdowns. Yeah. And three yeah. touchdowns and a two-point and a two-point conversion and a field goal. Okay, got it. Got to do the math, man. Got to do the math on the prediction, right? Uh, and then uh, I, see, uh, I see Philadelphia Vikings. I, said, I got Vikings 17 – and uh, Philly, uh, 14. All right, so we have the reverse on the score. All right, so let's go back to life, okay? So those of you who don't give a shit about football at all, as we do, um, there seems to be a, um, a plague going on, women misunderstanding men. I, I don't know where that ever started. probably started back in the caveman days, but it uh, seems to be going on. It, it seems like women don't listen when they first date men. They have a story going into that relationship. Why? Because I found that a lot of women don't go out there and date enough. And even the ones that date enough don't really necessarily know exactly what they want. So they get triggered by what they think they should have. And they meet somebody who's slick and charming and evolved and all this other stuff. But he drops a little bombshell. It could be something as simple as, you know, I don't know when I'm going to move back to Columbia, you know. I have no idea. Just picking Columbia out of my left hand, you know. I don't know where I'm going to move back to Columbia. And the woman just thinks like, nah, you know, I've got a magical vagina. It's going to make him want to stay. And they don't listen to what a man says. And I think that's one of the biggest things that women don't do is that they don't listen to exactly what a man says in those first few weeks. And they create a relationship story based on her needs, not what she's hearing. And that's a huge mistake that women make. One of the biggest ones that they make all the time. They've been doing it forever and ever and ever. How many times have I coached so many women six months in and they tell me that eventually they think he's going to turn around. He's going to turn. I know he's going to turn around. He's going to turn around. And I look and I go, "Uh, what did he tell you in the first two weeks? And I have him write it out. And I go, well, there's your answer right there. Oh, no, 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 no. He just said that in the beginning. No, he's going to change. I said, what's his behavior like now? It's the exact same. Men don't change. Women don't listen. Now, the problem is because women don't listen, we get sucked in because the women give the gift that keeps on giving the vagina that we love so much, right? And our penis literally just says, no, man, don't give this up. Her body's great. It feels so good. She's warm. She's moist. She feels great. She comes. She makes me feel magical. Don't give her up. And then our heads go, oh, man, I'm in the, I, I, did, it. I did it again. I wasn't honest. It's like she's just not exactly what I'm looking for. She may not be hot enough. She may not be smart enough. But the minute we have sex, we get dumb for like a week or two. And then all of a sudden we get involved in this relationship where you look at her and just go, well, you know, I I don't really know. I might still go to Columbia. She ignores it, right? And then two weeks later, she, you know, she's not giving you the vagina anymore at all. As a matter of fact, she's, you know, she's done a shutdown. It's a complete lockdown down there. It's like Alcatraz. And there's all these cold waters around it. So you go see a movie with her and you can feel the icy waters around it. It's, it's like escape to Alcatraz ain't happening this week, is tonight, right, at all. So then what happens is you come home and you think to yourself, What? I should probably break up with her. Right. So you should break up with her, right? So 
It's also that Britney Spears song, Oops, I Did It Again, right? So you know, all of a sudden you're in this fucking thing and you say to yourself, God damn, I did it again. Holy shit, I've done it thousands of times, right? You get sucked in, you know they're not what you're looking for. And please, women, don't get upset. Please. If I say you're not hot enough for me, it doesn't mean you're not hot enough for 10,000 other guys. It's got nothing to do with your looks. It's just, it's a spark. It's chemistry. It's that it factor. You know, it's like, you can look at the women I dated and some of them you might think like, ew, I don't think they're real. I think they're pretty goddamn hot, right? So it's all about that it factor. Every single time a man doesn't have the it factor with a woman, there's nothing you can do. You can't sell it. You can't fuck the it factor out of him. You can't blow the it factor out of him. You can't buy the it factor out of him because he's going to always think that he can do better. So you get involved in a relationship like that, like I have many, many times, and we think we're just going to give them a chance, right? And then all of a sudden, you feel like, shit, I got to break up with her. So what do you do? Why don't you tell everybody what you did? Because what you did is something I've done my whole life. <clears throat> God, this is so hard to admit. So please don't ever fucking like, you know, yell at me for this. Because this confession right now is one of the biggest man confessions you're ever going to have. What do we turn into? I got cold. I think what you said, it was right. You said like it's a spark, that it factor, that that thing between when you have a that spark with someone, it's like a flame, right? It's like hot and it's warm and it's inviting. But as soon as you don't feel it anymore, it's like the, the fire goes out. And then I think you just become cold. At least I, be, I do. I get kind of like a little more distant. Maybe I don't text as much. And it's not I'm like I'm doing it on purpose. I'm not like trying to do it. I'm not doing it to create space. But I think I just kind of automatically go into that zone because I'm not as engaged anymore. Okay. So we're not as engaged anymore because we're not being honest with ourselves. So the next thing to do is to step up and actually talk to her and just go, look, you're a really wonderful person. You know, I think you're great. I think you're fantastic. But we don't have that it factor. You know, I just don't see us going long term. It's very simple to do. But... <laughs> Right, because it is simple to do. But what do we do in that situation? We do the pullback. We do the male pullback. Right? You know, we kind of hang out with them. We give it another shot. We're not really in. They can feel it. You know, we know we should talk to them. Then we have our funny conversation where we laugh and we go ha ha ha. And I've done it a thousand times too. The woman feels it. And what we do is we don't give her the truth that we should be giving her. So then all of a sudden, you just recently got off the hook, right? It's so great. Isn't it great when they let us off the hook? Like, <laughs> yay, she let me off the hook. Oh, my God. She told me she's not feeling it with me. And she told me that she knows that I'm not fully into it and she deserves better. And we can walk away. And then we're swiping the next day. We're out there at Whole Foods flirting with women again. But it feels like shit because we're not stepping up to the plate. And it's the cheap pussy, wimpy way of doing things. But yet, so many men and women do the same thing. Women are not, oh, I'm throwing men under the bus right now. You know, it's a Greyhound bus. We're getting the fucking tires run under us. But I can tell you, women do the same exact thing. A lot of them do. Yeah. Less so than we do. So <laughs> how does a woman deal, okay, when a man is pulling back and showing those signs? right? It's the three signs, if you think about it. Hmm, this is a good one, right? It's the three signs. The text frequency stops, right? Basically, okay? So you got three signs. The text frequency stops, right? Okay. Um, the conversations that were once deep are now kind of shallow, right? So deep conversations become the kiddie pool that's full of urine because the guy doesn't know what to do because he knows that he's doing something that's not right. And the third thing is, is that he's just, he no longer really wants to do anything with you, but it's okay for you to come over, right? Like he wants you to come over late, like 9, 30, 10. He tells you that he's working literally, like I got a lot of work to do. So come over at 9, 30 and 10 and you literally spend a half an hour on the couch, you roll a joint, you give them some wine, and you know, you're not really listening to them at all because you feel guilty inside and you just want to have sex with them. Those are the three signs that the man no longer wants to be involved in a relationship with you and he wants to just hump you like crazy. So I'm really giving some men's secrets today. It seems like we've been throwing men under the bus, giving these secrets out there, but I think it's really important. So you've done that and I've done that. I mean, I remember I was dating somebody a couple of years ago and we had this thing and she was a really she's a great girl and we're friends now. But like, you know, we went out the first couple of times and I realized that we just didn't have the it factor or really I wasn't really ready for a relationship at the time. She's, I look at pictures of her on Instagram now. 
It's a knockout. I mean, gorgeous, sweet, and warm. We just didn't have that personality thing, you know, where we finish each other's sentences and, you know, all that other stuff and, you know, whatever it might be. And I just kept bringing her over like, yeah, why don't you just come over right now? I'll just come over, you know, we'll have a quick dinner. Well, do you want to go out? No, no, no. Let's just order something in because you want to be as close to the bed as possible because you know you, it's hard to fake a two-hour dinner. So those are major signs that the man needs to be broken up with. She caught those signs off of you very, very quickly. I commend her. But how did it, <laughs> how did it make you feel as a, as a man? And, and I remember you said to me, well, you know, at least now next time. It's like, are we really going to learn from these mistakes or are we just going to keep doing them? Well, it doesn't – you know, it's, it, the funny thing is it's really funny. And I'm not sure if, you've, if you felt this, you notice it, but like – you like you know that you're already emotionally cut off that you already are already done right you that that you reach that conclusion maybe a few days before or a week or if it, if you're really bad like <laughs> months before <Yeah. laughs> that's some real stam- stamina to go that long <laughs> i know and then uh but and you know what you should do right you know what you're supposed to do you're supposed to break up or at least express those feelings like you know it's not working but then you don't but then if she does it even though you don't, it's good, and you feel like relieved, like you said. You also feel like, damn, like you also don't. Your ego also still somehow gets in there a little bit, even though you it was you that wanted this. <laughs> yeah. And but somehow your ego still feels a little like ah, uh, like a little. Uh. I know. <laughs> we think sometimes you go, man, maybe you know, um, maybe I really uh, no, man, maybe I really want her right now. But those are, we just exposed three really major signs that the words, it's always to me, and this is something that's really important, right? His words don't match his actions. Actions speak louder than words. And I think women fall for words and not look at the actions. Because if you break down every relationship that's ever gone wrong, look at his actions, I remember I was dating somebody for a year. I never traveled with her. You know me. I travel all the time, right? I always made it a business trip. Bullshit. I didn't want to go away with her because I had fucking people that I was hanging out with in other places. I wasn't cheating. I just wanted to be with my friends alone. I needed a break, you know, whatever it might be. Words mean nothing. Women fall for words. Women are such words people. You know, it's like if a man can go and literally be Prince Charming with his words, a woman will fall for those words. But I tell women all the time, it's a cheat sheet. Write down all the words that a man has said. And then on the other side, write down the actions and know whether you're dating an A, B, C, D, or F. If you're dating some guy that's only 50% action, and only 50% of actions meet, meet, matches 100% of the words, you're dating a fucking failure. You're dating somebody that was getting like blue stars or Fs in, in school. You know, so look at all that stuff. Anyway, tomorrow is Championship Sunday. Today is, is Get Real Saturday, whatever you want to call it. And we are done. Do me a favor, okay, for all of you that are dating in relationships, pass this along. Please help the podcast gain more momentum and steam so by the end of this year we can be the New England podcast and I could be the Tom Brady of dating podcasts, whatever you want to do. Anyway, see you tomorrow. Have a wonderful day.